first and foremost, restaurants are absolutely needed in any community. Restaurants do more than people will ever understand. We are the heart of everything in any major city. It's interwoven with the um, ability to go to shops and get a beer and all those things together make it. But without the restaurants, you don't have the same dynamic. You don't go to, let's meet at the library. You say, let's meet at the neighborhood pub, the bar. If Stillwater would have lost some of its restaurants, it wouldn't be the same. Yeah, they're competition, but they're all my friends. Everybody in this block and in Hudson, they're all my friends and I wish them nothing but success. So if any of them had lost their business, it only makes us weaker in that community because it's one less place that people can go seek refuge for. Hi, my name is Joe Ellens. I am the owner and operator of Lolo American Kitchen, Lolito Cantina, and Stillwater Proper. Lolo is an acronym for locally owned, locally operated. Brad, myself, and Mark are all partners, and we've all born and raised in this area. We wanted to own a restaurant in the area that we love. My first job was dishwashing and busting tables at a place called the Terra Hideaway in town, Phil's Club Terra, which is kind of a place that's been in town for, you know, almost 100 years. I think it was opened in the mid-1920s. Uh, and Phil Barbatsis, the owner, um, is one of my mentors. I consider him almost like a second dad. And even my partner, Brad, he worked there as well. And he also considered him like a huge mentor. Um, I, I owe him a lot. So I met Brad at the restaurant Phil's Terra Hideaway. A whole group of us that are still friends to this day, um, including Sean Smalley, we all worked there. There was times me working at the Terra with him, we would get together drinking late night. We were just saying, you know, how cool would it be to have a restaurant that was only five tables? That was back in 2004, probably. If you move in 10 years later, that's basically what we did with the, you know, opening up Lolo American Kitchen. So it's kind of ironic, uh, 15, 20 years ago, that first slight drunken conversation talking about having a restaurant that's only got five tables is kind of coming to, what do they call it, fruition because here we are, our restaurants are small again, you know. That first week of March to second week, we're seeing major uh, sports teams stopping play. This is real. And I remember we had a Saturday a band booked. It's getting worse and worse and people are starting to freak out. And you'd already seen the last couple weeks the sales slowly get worse, which normally they should be getting better as the weather gets better in March. We ended up having a lot of people show up. It was almost like everybody knew that this could be the last definitive fun night that they could have enjoying live music out without masks, hanging out, engaging. For, uh, two days later, we were, we were closed. You know, we went from having a packed bar up here, people dancing, having a good time, loud music, drinks going everywhere. Two days later, closed. Worst thing ever was having to tell every member of your staff, I need you guys to go on unemployment. I don't know what else to tell you. We'll just get through this together, I guess. But yeah, it's, that was hard. The only thing we can do is do takeout food. So we had to develop a major social media presence, update our menus. We wanted to make sure that we didn't overload our kitchen with takeout. So we only allowed four orders every 15 minutes. We wanted to make sure that when you pulled up to get your food curbside, we were handing your food within a minute. That was like our biggest thing. It's like, there's certain things we can do to keep the quality up, but there's certain things we can do on the service side that are gonna be way better than everybody else. And we developed our own model and it, it worked beautifully. Nobody had to wait for food and doing whatever we could to get people excited. I, I remember just juicing fruits and vegetables and doing different things and saying, hey, here's my cocktail kit, you know, just add tequila or uh, vodka. So when we were slowly starting to be allowed to uh, be open in Minnesota, we had a patio at Hudson, so that was great. Lolo Stillwater has a patio and we kind of made that work for food and beverage. Here at Lolito Cantina, we don't have a patio. And at first the governor said, you can only open on the patio. We got kind of creative in Stillwater. It was a trashy alleyway. Clean, spray, sanitize, deodorize everything, clean the heck out of our back area. And we created a faux patio out of what otherwise would have just been a, a crappy alleyway that we wouldn't have had the pandemic uh, not happen. With everything that's happened over the last year with the pandemic, it's the hardest thing for my wife, myself, my kids. The things we like to do is 
visit my friends' restaurants. Everything we do revolves around eating, supporting our community. And for so long, we haven't been able to do that. Um, I'm just so excited that in Hudson and in Stillwater, none of the restaurants have closed. That to me is the best thing that our community, we've all made it through. Everybody struggled the same, but we've all made it through. Good things are happening. You know, I can't wait to have a steak at the Terre Hideaway. Go back to where everything started from. Uh, God, this area is so great. It's Everybody's coming down here because there's so many things to do. Go in the park, you can go walk around, you can bike on all these beautiful paths. It's, this area is unbelievable. 